the game that Penn State fans probably want to win second most on the schedule. I think that's fair. Penn State fans really want to beat Ohio State. But the, the series that's been a little more back and forth, a little bit better of a series over time, Penn State and Michigan, the next iteration in 2021 coming up this weekend at Beaver Stadium. It's don't call it the whiteout. It's the helmet game. How many different ways can we do this, by the way? How many different ways can we get the crowd to dress up in certain things to make it look cool? I think it's fun. I don't want to be a buzzkill. But, like, the helmet game. Anyway, that's not what we're talking about today. I'm your host, Thomas Frank Carr. We're talking about the pass rush of Michigan versus the Penn State passing attack, specifically the tackles and Sean Clifford. To me, that's going to determine the entire game. If Penn State can move the football offensively, it's going to be because they it be because they have an answer to this particular problem. We're going to get into that in detail today, but that's what I've come up with after listening to James Franklin, after talking uh, to some sources, after watching the film and looking up the numbers. It is by far and away the biggest advantage that Michigan has, and it is a part of Penn State's core of what they want to do. Now, on the flip side, on the defense, I think we're all aware of what Penn State needs to do to stop the run. They've been back and forth about doing that. But this is the thing. This can shut down the entire game for Penn State football. And we'll get into it today. Before we do, make sure you subscribe to the video and make sure you uh, like the video, by the way, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Make sure you get that right. Subscribe to the channel, like the video, because if you like the video... It lets everyone know that you liked it, and then other people will know that it's good, so that people will watch it. That's the idea, right? Anyway, we'll get into what James Franklin had to say about the Penn State pass protection and the unit on the other side of the ball. Here he is giving a general view of not only the Penn State or the the Michigan secondary, but also and specifically the guys up front. I still think you know it's a, it's a decent amount of man coverage. Um, I think the thing that probably really differentiates them right now is is having two defensive ends that can cause real problems for people. I mean, you watch that Michigan State game, both of those defensive ends showed up with, with huge plays. Um, and when you're able to have a guy on, on either side, that, that, becomes, that becomes real challenging. You have to decide how you're going to deal with both of them. So the... Michigan front seven in general is very good. Good run stuffers, big physical, everything you've come to expect from that unit. And they've got another couple of monsters on the edge in Aiden Hutchinson and David Ajabo. And we'll get to what they do right now because they are the best pass rush that Penn State's going to see all season long. This is the best unit. And I understand that Ohio State as, as a front four they have some really good interior players, but this is possibly the worst matchup that Penn State's had in terms of pass rush versus their individual players. Penn State's very good in the interior when it comes to pass protection, a little weaker on the outside. We'll get to that in just a little bit from what James Franklin thinks about that, but these two guys are impressive. Uh, you look at their ability to not just get to the quarterback with pressures here by PFF stats. Uh, 45 pressures from Aiden Hutchinson. That's one of the top marks in the country. His seven sacks, David Ajabo has eight, maybe less impact on the quarterback. But both of these guys, not only do they get sacks, they have 11 hits on the quarterback between them outside of those sacks. So they are hitting the quarterback at an extremely high rate. They win and they win well. That's going to be the matchup right there. How do you stop those guys? And James Franklin talked about it. You've got to have a plan for how you do that. If you want to, you can chip and double team and do things like that. The problem then becomes if you start taking players out of the, the pass route, you give Michigan the ability to then blitz and you're, you're confining your quarterback into the pocket where those guys can then take more time to work. If you only have three receivers in the route, or if you go max protect and you only have two receivers in the route, you really are, it, it's a 50-50 play. It's succeed or fail. There's really no other way around that when you don't have more options in the passing game. You start taking away tight ends. You start taking away uh, running backs out of the pass pattern. You limit your ability to get the ball and at least get some yards. You do that get behind the chains, you see where this is going, right? You see that you can, you, can, you can block yourself into a hole if you try and do that. So, a couple of times, 
Penn State's tackles are going to have to be on the outside on their own. How does James Franklin see his unit out there between Caden Wallace and Rashid Walker? Um, for the most part, in pass protection, pretty good, especially based on the question I got earlier, uh, based on how many times we're throwing the ball a game. Um, I, I, think, I think pretty good. I think we need to be more consistent and more physical in the run game. Um, you know, I think I think that's something that will not only help our offense, but it will also help them um, when you can when you can use the physicality of the run game to to bang on guys uh, that maybe makes them less effective um, in the pass game, um, and so they're not just you know pinning their ears back and, and coming off that edge every single every single down. But but overall, um, from a pass protection standpoint. Uh, I think pretty well. Uh, there's there's times obviously where we need to be firmer, and there's times where uh, we need to be better with our hands or our footwork and finishing and things like that. But so, do you think that Penn State's going to be able to run the ball consistently or effectively to take the edge off the pass rush? Because again, I don't either. That's why this pass protection situation to me is the biggest thing. But in this game, is that I, Penn, Penn State's not going to be able to run the ball. So they're going to have to, in certain situations, make sure that those guys don't get to Sean Clifford. It's something that they've been trying to work on all season long and something that I think uh, it's been okay. James Franklin said, good. Yeah, they've been good. They, they've been okay when it comes to pass protection, especially on the right side, Caden Wallace. His ability to protect against speed has been an issue. Um, in games where they've played teams that don't like to stunt or don't have speed rushers, you're thinking more of the games against uh, Indiana, um, Iowa, I think was actually a pretty good situation for them from a pass protection standpoint. And then against, um, uh, against Auburn, they were able to pass block pretty well. Those are all power teams or teams that didn't like to stunt or blitz too much. This game, they're going up against a team that has power and speed. And here are the numbers right here. You see that only four sacks on the season in almost 400 passing snaps for Caden Wallace and Rasheed Walker only two on over 400. This only tells part of the story. Pressure has been a problem for Caden Wallace, the ability to lose and lose quickly to guys that have speed to the outside. When that happens, he tends to also overset and open up a door inside. This is the part where you can you can get your quarterback creamed in this particular game is he's got to play the best he's played all season long. There, there's no there's no middle ground on Caden Wallace or Rasheed Walker's performance in this game because they're not going to be able to run the ball and they're going to be on an island in pass protection at some point so that you don't lose yards and have sort of that snowball effect in terms of uh, in terms of playing behind the sticks. So it's going to be critical. Either they pass block well or Sean Clifford is the full Sean Clifford. And what I mean by that is his ability to escape the pocket and extend plays. Uh, now, getting back to the Penn State uh, running game, part of the running game for the first half of the season was Sean Clifford on scrambles and breaking contain and running the football, not just scrambling to extend plays, not just being you know elusive in the pocket. It was actually going out and running. And that has been something that he has not done since his return to injury. And I know that you know that because you've watched the football, but here are the numbers. Here are Here is how stark it is. Now, in terms of his average time to throw, that's just all of his passes all added up and then divided by the number of passes, essentially. So 2.74 seconds, 2.78. That's relatively the same. But the number of times he's actually scrambled since coming back from his injury, look at it. He has 47 yards on seven carries. Not only is it less than half the number of times, but also it's, it's a, a fraction of the yardage he's able to pick up. Not only that, but another thing that I, I was able to find is when he does scramble, he doesn't hold on to the ball as long. Nearly a full second less on average he's holding on to the football when he's scrambling. So that means that he's dumping the ball off, he's throwing it away, he's not extending plays necessarily to find players downfield, he's extending plays to survive. And that, to me, is going to be the biggest thing. You need full Sean Clifford. You need to get him 
out in space and breaking down zones. Now, this is one thing that, that James Franklin talked about earlier about the uh, Michigan defense playing primarily and still a good bit of single coverage. That is true. But when you look at their overall philosophy and all of the coverages they run now, it is much more diverse and they do a much better job of disguising pre and post snap. And that is one thing I think Mike McDonald has brought to Michigan is a big boy defense. A former assistant with the Baltimore Ravens, they run a variety of coverages. They run two high looks in cover two, some cover six. They even throw in some sub varieties too, where before it was primarily cover one, cover three. That means either zone coverage that is in the same family as man coverage or just straight up man to man coverage. There's a good bit of that. And when that happens, Jahan Dotson and the receivers have to win those routes. They have to have a similar performance to what they did against Maryland. Now, that's going to be tough because it's a good Michigan secondary. I wouldn't say that it's great. Individual players in it are good, but overall, there's no weak link. There's no weakness on this defense. You're going to say, okay, that's our cheat code for this game, at least when you look at the kind of overview of what they do. They mix in and out zone coverage, too, that I don't think Sean Clifford can just sit there, diagnose, and deliver. That has how That's how Penn State's been winning is him from the pocket. I don't know there's going to be a pocket. So he's going to have to do something extra in this game. And if he can get those quick wins and the receivers can get those quick wins against man coverage, that is the recipe to slow down that pass rush. Because then you have to divert some more players into zone. You can't be as aggressive and you can't send as many blitzes at Clifford. That's been another uh, theme over the last two weeks of what teams have tried to do to Sean Clifford is throw six and seven man pressures at him, try to get him to hold on to the ball, looking for a deep shot, and then sack him in the pocket. He was much better this past weekend at delivering the check down to the running back. That's going to be another key in this game is just his ability to maintain that equilibrium of trying to be aggressive with the football, but not getting stuck in a bad situation. If you're asking me right now at this point in the week, I think James Franklin's right. They've been good. I would say they've been okay in pass protection on the edge. So Penn State has a chance in this game. But the clear advantage is to uh, Aiden Hutchinson and David Ajabo and that ability to generate explosive game-defining plays on the edge. They just need one or two of them to get a sack or to force a bad throw and an interception. And then Penn State's defense is once again put in a rough situation. Now, the good news is... Um, I don't know that the uh, Michigan offense is nearly as talented or nearly as interesting. They are very Jim Harbaugh. They line up in a spread with a power formation front. Bunch of big dudes. It, it's, it's a bunch of different things that equate to, they're okay. Penn State defense should be able to do enough against that to keep the game in line, and that's going to put it squarely once again on Sean Clifford's shoulders. So buckle up, Penn State fans. It's going to be another wild ride on Saturday. That does it for the BWI Daily Edition. I'm your host, Thomas Frank Carr. We'll talk to you tomorrow.